This is Pro Series Off Topic. Welcome back to Pro Series Off Topic. This is episode 80. Absolutely insane that we're on episode 8. We just hit 160 of Pro Series this week, which is absolutely insane. I feel like I just started this, but um, if you have not listened to Pro Series this week, it was with Nick Frazita. He is from Pittsburgh. He is a entrepreneur, owner of multiple financial service businesses. We actually sat down here and it was an in-person episode. So if you want to go listen to it and watch it, go over to Spotify or YouTube. It was a great episode. Uh, I love doing these in-person episodes, especially in my basement. It just makes it feel more like a studio. One day I will have a nice studio like Eric McKenna. If you remember uh, me being on that a couple years ago, that studio is that goals right there. Um, but I want to get into the, this week's podcast. Um, first up, let's talk about a video. You probably remember a few weeks ago, Greg Smith, uh, tagged me and a few other people into a video, kind of get advice, kind of like a social media ice bucket challenge type of deal. But let's watch what he has to say first, and then I will answer. How do I choose paint colors? I don't. Tori Smith is a pro. She choose them for me. Um, as you can tell, we've been painting the basement right now. Light blue turned out perfect as always. Uh, I have four of the pros I'd like to call out. Dario, Edith, Adrian, and Eric. By the way, Eric, congratulations on your award. Um, and I'd like to know what your process is uh, because I have no clue. One time I painted our bedroom a color called flash green and we didn't sleep for like four days. You know, needless to say, it got repainted. But um, let me know what your thoughts are. Cool. Um, well, if you have not seen Greg, Greg has been on HGTV multiple times. He worked on a new show with Jessica Alba, The Honest Company, um, or Honest Renovation. Um, he and Dario are actually on my podcast, and I think it's the we shot it two weeks ago, I believe. It will be released the week of Thanksgiving, so look forward to that. But answering Greg's question, um, I am not the best with paint colors. Um, when it comes to material colors, I'm really good with. It's just, I think paint is just such a, you know, it, it's a make or break. You know, a lot of my house is black. It's black and white or black and like an off white or tan. Um, I'm very big into neutrals and, you know, neutrals mixed with black. Um, but honestly, I'm not the best with colors. Um, I mean, I could pick them, but I just think paint colors is the hardest thing in the world to pick, especially for yourself. Um, is it's probably the hardest thing, but I, I think the best thing to do is figure out what's going in the room first and then pick the paint colors. I think pinking the paint colors last is probably the best thing. Um, especially when like, you know, if you're doing a kitchen or something, looking at the materials and figuring out what granite you are sold on because, or quartz or whatever, because those are more permanent things. You could go back and paint the room. Like Greg said, he went back and painted the room. You could always go back and paint a room. I think Pick out the more permanent fixtures of a room first and then do the paint color last and just have it kind of go with it or um, be an accent to what you've already picked out. But um, again, I hate picking out paint colors. It's the most hair ripping out moments of my life. I absolutely hate it, especially with yourself. It is the most god awful thing to do. Um, and again, like a lot of my designs... I didn't really pick out a lot of paint colors. I let the customers do that because I'm not seeing it every day. So, I mean, I'll give them advice on a couple shades that maybe go with what we've already done, like with the kitchen, with, with the cabinets, the countertops, the backsplash, everything, and kind of have them be sold on it and make sure you put samples on the wall. Like I've seen so many people, like especially with grays, when grays was a huge thing so many years ago. Um, I feel like most people are getting rid of the gray in their house anyways. Um, but gray could change drastically, especially if you put it in a basement, it could look purple or blue or depends on the lighting you have in your house. So getting samples from the store, putting it up on the wall after you are done with the job, live with those samples for you know a week, see what it looks like in the daytime, the nighttime. That's probably the best and only way I, I've done it and kind of worked with it. But also, don't be afraid of doing black. Black is a very underrated color. I think it goes with literally everything. I don't think it's a trend. I don't think it will go away. 
Um, I have many black accent walls in my house and I just think most people were afraid of black and then they come in and they see it and they're like, oh wow, that actually does look sharp. The only issue with it, you need to make sure your drywall is in good condition because once you paint your any wall a dark color, it will show every single imperfection in the wall. Um, I think a lighter color will show less and hide a lot of that and muffle kind of the the the, the dents and the bumps and stuff in the drywall. Um, but that's that's my advice, Greg. So thank you for tagging me in this. Um, next up, I did announce this week that I was thirty under thirty, which I am hugely excited about. I am very honored about. It is something that. It just, I got the email when I was away at a sales meeting and um, ever since then, I've kind of been in kind of shock at just being recognized for an organization that you've done so much for is just so, so uh, beneficial. So, so heartwarming. Can't wait to meet the rest of the 30 under 30. I've already talked to a few on LinkedIn and social media, it's great to connect with them. And it's just kind of just another great networking event. Um, some people ask me what the celebration in Vegas means. Every year, NKBA has a show called KBiz, the Kitchen and Bath Industry Show. Um, it's in Vegas. Um, it's been in Vegas for the past two years, back in Vegas. Next February, February 25th through the 27th. And it's just the premier kitchen industry show. And it is also tied up with the International Builders Association show, which is awesome. I actually kind of want to make it into those halls this year because I have not been able to step foot. But they are looking for a TikTok host to take over one of their halls at KBiz this year. And, you know, I want to pitch it. Hey, why not? Um, I love TikTok. I love social media. I love the industry. Um, what I would love to do is just go around and see the the best of the best. The best thing about KBiz is there's so much marketing dollars that are put into these booths. Some of these booths are absolutely insane. They look better than some showrooms. Um, I love looking forward to seeing like Kohler or Toto or Bloom or Cosentino. Um, those were like the top of the line booths last year, especially Cosentino with um, some of the, they just made it more interactive. You kind of like have to step into it. It's not like a regular industry show that you're used to. Maybe your, your local home show. It is like that times 20. It's on steroids. It's amazing show, but I'm looking forward to seeing who has the best booth this year and who has the best product that's coming out this year. Um, I think every year you could always talk about who has that best product. I think two years ago, Kohler had the, they brought back the cool colors for all of their um, fixtures, which is really cool. And you got to vote on them, which is really cool to make that interactive part of the show. And then Cosentino last year brought in some crazy colors for cords. They had this emerald color and it just came out. Um, I guess a couple weeks ago, and it is the most beautiful court you'll ever see. Um, go check that out at your local Cosentino showroom. But that's what I'm looking forward to seeing what those showstoppers are and just seeing the other products that are just not maybe in your, in your area or you just don't see every day and just be introduced to new product is also is just such a cool thing to do. Um, I look forward to KBiz every year. It is such a fun thing being in Vegas. I think it's meant to be in Vegas. It's laid out perfectly out there. Um, a little people, a little um, uh, perspective on the show. Um, it's fifty thousand net square feet of exhibits. Um, Six hundred and seventy plus exhibits. Um, it's absolutely insane. I love every bit of it. It is the coolest thing. Walking around, seeing all the cool appliances also is the coolest thing. Seeing leather wrapped appliances and gold plated appliances. That's just like dreams and goals and stuff that you don't see in the showrooms around your area all the time. So it is cool to see that. But that's what I have to say about uh, okay, Biz, let's get into the new music this week. I'm going to first start up with Jelly Roll. <clears throat> Came out with a new album this week called Beautifully Broken. Um, it is a 22 song record. And then later in the day, he came out with 
a deluxe version, which is kind of like you kind of pulled a Post Malone there. But overall, it is Jelly Roll through and through. It's nothing out of the ordinary for Jelly Roll. But what really stood out to me song wise is his collaborations. He, me being from Pittsburgh, he has a song with Wiz called Higher Than Heavens. It's kind of cool seeing Wiz Khalifa on a country record. Um, but it, it's great. It, he has a lot, couple songs with MGK. So the the original LP is with 22 Records. And then the deluxe is called Beautifully Broken, Picking Up the Pieces. That is with 28, which he added song with Halsey, Keith Urban, Ernest, Russ, Skylar Gray. And then he added the MGK and Jelly Roll song with called Lonely Road that you've already known. Added that to the deluxe version. But overall, great album. Um, let's get into the other songs. I've talked about this guy many times on this podcast, No Hicks. He had a great song with Justin Moore a few months back. He's a newer artist. He came out with a new song called Night's Memories. Stories, uh, great song. I think he he has that really cool voice that's really big right now in country music. Um, great song. My song of the week is Kane Brown, Backseat Driver. It is just that storytelling song of his daughter in the backseat talking about talking to him about everything that she's seeing on the on the road and asking questions and stuff. It's just I it's just a great storytelling song. Kane it has that voice kind of like I don't know what to compare it to like Randy Travis or someone that is really good at storytelling, but you know, you're so used to Kane Brown with, you know, marshmallow, these upbeat songs, but I love when he has these songs that are just storytellers. Um, it's just a great meaning song. I can't wait for the music video for this song. Um, and this is going to be part of his new, uh, album called the high road. So I'm looking forward to that. It looks like he's leaning more in his country roots on this album caught a little of the um hip hop and you know with marshmallow out um but excited for that one it's just a great song go check that one out next up walker hayes I talked about many times on this this uh podcast walker hayes is a great songwriter he really is all his songs are great songwriters it's the production of it that i just can't get with um like songs like don't let her Great song, beautifully product um, produced. Um, but ever since Fancy, like he he keeps making all his songs sound like that. And I want him, like someone in his team, to be like, "Hey, let's change it up." You know, you have good songwriting. Let's not overproduce it. Let's not try to keep copying pasty f- Fancy. Like he came out with this new song called Five to Nine. Great meaning. It just it's. He's like five years too late with this type of sound. And he's not doing himself a service at all releasing music like this. Um, it's sad because I do really like him. I like his story. I like his songwriting. Like This is a good meaning song. It's greatly written. But the production of it just keeps sounding like fancy like. And I wish he would get away from that because he would do so much better and gain so much more respect in the country music industry. Um, next up, this is probably a close second for me. It's nothing new, like song wise, but it's new release wise. Rodney Atkins came out with an acoustic sessions of his like big hits, like "These Are My People," "Take a Back Road," "Watching You," "Farmer's Daughter." Um, all great songs that really define the early two thousands to mid to late two thousands, and it it's great to hear acoustic sets like this even though it's not new music i love hearing these songs again kind of reimagined he didn't sing them differently it's just acoustic broken down production of the song which is awesome to hear his voice sounds just as good as it did back in the day chris lane he hasn't had anything huge lately but he has lived a lot of life and he is writing some great music of that life he is living with his kids his marriage um the his next song is called if i die before you great meaning song um hopefully this pops off because this is a great beautifully perspective of what i love about country music um the storytelling any type of mute part of country music that isn't talking about what you know stereotypical country music is talking about i love just talk about life um is my my favorite thing Ernest came out with his own version of a song that he sang with Lainey Wilson on his latest record called What If I Could. 
um, or what if I could great song. Um, I have, a, a feeling that he wanted to release it as a single with Laney. Laney's probably team didn't let them do that. So he just came out with it as a single on his, his own. Um, I think it was really cool as a duet though. I, I still do 100% like this song. And I think it was originally a Laney song because she came out with her own version before the this single and before the album on Apple Music Sessions, like that last, the Lost Nashville songs. So it was probably a song that she just didn't have room for on her record. And my favorite version out of the two solos, Laney and Ernest, was them singing together. So it's sad that that he's releasing this one and not with Laney, but still a great song. Go check that one out. Um, next up, not on my bingo card this week. Dolly came out with a song with Maddie and Tay, Jesse James Decker, and uh, a newer artist called Callie. It's not coming up. Um, but all five of them on this new song called Gonna Be You. And it's probably, in my opinion, probably one of the better Dolly songs that she's come out recently. I'm not going back to her her early days, um, but it, recently. Um, in country, not her rock album that came out last year. Just strictly country. This this song is great. It's going to be called Gonna Be You. Go check that one out. Brian Kelly came out with another song called If I Go First. Another great written song. Brian Kelly is a great artist. He, if you don't know, he's that one ha other half of Florida Georgia Line. He is hasn't really had that like that number one hit yet, which I'm rooting for because he does have some great songs. Um, but go check that out. That's all we have for new music this week. Um, side note, more and more Christmas music's coming out. So I, I haven't really, really, really d dove into it except that little big town album a couple weeks ago. Um, but I did see Jimmy Fallon is coming out with a Christmas album called Holiday Seasoning. Great, great title. Just great title. I just can't wait for Christmas music. Um, let's get into the top five from the country media base chart number five this week justin moore number four this week kane brown and marshmallow with miles on it number three this week jelly roll i am not okay number two post malone and blake shelton with pour me a drink and number one luke bryan love you miss you mean it that's all we have this week we have another pro series coming out midweek so stay tuned to that um, one thing I didn't say, if you're listening to this on Sunday, it is Nala's birthday. She's laying right next to me right after this. We are going to go bake her a cake. Um, I'll post that in my stories if you are listening to this, but, um, that's all we have th this week. Um, stay tuned. Another, another pro series coming out midweek, and then we will talk next week. <laughs>